The Lord is my light, my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is my protector of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? My enemies that trouble me have themselves been weakened and have fallen. If armies encamp should stand against me, my heart shall not fear. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Amen. These are the beautiful words of our Mass today, in the fourth Sunday after Pentecost, the words of the Psalm in the introit. The whole theme of this Mass is to make an act of confidence before God in spite of all. So therefore we come this morning, we remember the words of St. Ambrose we read yesterday in one of the nocturnes of Matins. He says, if our hearts are fearful, Christ sleeps at the bottom of the boat. But if we are mature, then he watches. So we need to grow and to mature in this spirit of faith, this confidence. And if we're not growing in our faith, then we become fearful. We become subject to the elements around us. And so therefore, my dear sisters who live in this monastery, I suggest one thing that we can do this summer is to continue to cultivate our love and devotion to our heavenly patron of monastic life, St. Benedict. When was the last time you ever sat down and, sat and spoke with this great patron of ours to speak to him as a saint. He's alive in his soul, in a beatific vision, and he's able to help you because he knows exactly the things and the challenges that you face uh, in the midst of these four walls of the monastery. St. Benedict can give us so much confidence because he himself was a man of confidence. If you recall, I love that book by um, Vindiat in the 1950s. And the book is called St. Benedict, um, Hero of the Hills. And there it gives a lot of great stories about St. Benedict. And I like this one of them. It was during the times of the wars in Italy... And so people were very poor and destitute because of the wars that were raging around uh, these, these societies. And it was around this time that po uh, St. Benedict began to perform many miracles. Uh, he multiplied the olive oil. Um, all of a sudden at nighttime, some mysterious man would come and deliver uh, hundreds of loaves of bread at the doorstep not knowing where any of these things came from. And with this, he was able to feed his 300 monks there in Monte Cassino. And he was able also to give so many uh, food items to all those people, all those local people who were around, living around the monastery in those times of need. But there was this one peasant that rarely ever came out to Mass uh, with the monks stayed away, but he heard so many things about uh, the great miracle worker. And he owed a creditor 12 coins. So the creditor, his name was Zala, and he was also a, an Aryan heretic. And he was a big brute of a man, looked like a lumberjack. And so he came out there to his peasant, and he says, I want those coins now. Give me a chance. I want it now. Pay me back. And so he says, well, because of the wars are raging, I gave my money for safekeeping to, to the holy man on Monte Cassino. And so the man took him and started beating him up and tied his arms. He says, let's go to the monastery. We're getting that money now. It belongs to me. So the man's all beat up. And there he go. They go off to the monastery and as they walk to the property, Zala with his horse, you know, all strong and Hercules looking. And there was St. Benedict, an old man 
sitting down, reading his spiritual uh, matters. And they came up close. And Zala spoke up. And he says, Are you the monk with this man's money? If so, hand it over to me or I'll break every bone in your body. And as soon as he said that, the ropes fell from behind the peasant's back and his arms that were tied behind his back. The ropes mysteriously fell off his hands. And then the man that was on his horse, Zala, all of a sudden he fell off his horse and started to grovel in the dirt, not knowing what was occurring. And Benedict just looked up and he called his monks to bring in the peasant into the refectory and give him something to eat. And right there, Zala was converted to the Catholic faith. He stopped persecuting the peasant and peace came over his soul as he made, as he made an act of faith. So my dear sisters, how about that type of patron? When we come to St. Benedict, there he is, that old gray man city, sitting at the, the kneeler, reading his spiritual, musing through his spiritual items in heaven, awaiting someone from the Benedictine tradition to come and to ask and to seek guidance and help. And why does this occur? Not because it's just Benedict but because he gives you an access to the most sacred heart of Jesus. It's Jesus' power that you're able to be comforted, put at ease, peaceful. Uh, I remember when I visited Clear Creek uh, over in Oklahoma back in August of 2012, those monks, they, they eat very well, you know, so <laughs> we were in a lunch, and I was wondering... How could this person, this monk up there singing the ringing in the dining room all lunch long? It was like 45, 50 minutes singing. Uh, and it was a book that was not even spiritual. You know, it was like a, an adventurous book about some man uh, uh, sailing through Ireland or whatever. And, <laughs> and, you know, he came to the part chanting the part about and he opened up a beer and drank it <laughs> it's like well that's very solemn <laughs> uh, and so sisters perhaps you don't maybe you don't uh, sing the you don't sing the readings in the dining room uh, but you might get those butterflies oh here I go here I go again I might mispronounce a word or I, it's me again I gotta sit, I gotta read the reading again for 50 minutes or there might be other little challenges you might occur and uh, might occur to you. Uh, and that's when we have to go during our free time to the most august of sacraments, to the blessed sacrament, to seek the help of Saint Benedict. Because many of our fears, they're just like those little zalas. And they're gonna crumble just by a mere wish of our heavenly patron. So as we continue this sacrifice, the Mass, let us remember as we close off this month of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, as we receive Holy Communion, let us listen to those words of that heart of hearts that says, Fili prebemiki cortum. My son, or in your case, my daughter, give me thy heart. And watch as you throw out your nets again in the fearful deeps and faraway places of my own comfort zone. Watch those great fish coming into your boat, the great fruits of religious, religious life, observance, serenity, peace, generosity, surrender, love, and service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen.